You're looking at one of Ed Reinhardt's black paintings, but actually there is no black on this painting. What may first appear as an all-over black square actually is a grid, a three-by-three three grid of, well, nine squares, and each square contains an intensely deep shade of either red, green, or blue. One could call these chromatic blacks or colored blacks because at the four corners of the painting we see actually a deep shade of red. Across the center of the painting we see a very deep green and midway along the top and bottom edges we find a very deep blue. Now if you don't see this at first there's a reason for it because even in front of the painting in the gallery perceiving this painting is a function of the rods and cones adjusting in your eye. It's actually the same experience you have when waking up in the middle of the night when at first everything is black and then gradually as your rods and cones adjust color forms slowly, gradually emerge. Perceiving this composition takes time, it takes patience and it takes attention and Ed Reinhardt was actually very very interested in exactly those qualities for he sought to purify art and the experience of it. Reinhardt wanted to keep art and business totally separate. He relished the fact that these paintings are almost impossible to reproduce in photography. Reinhardt was in the abstract expressionist circle. However, the paint qualities that you associate with that movement are totally lacking in Reinhardt, and there's a reason for that. Reinhardt was an oppositional figure. If he knew that he were lumped in with the abstract expressionists, he would cringe at the thought. Ad Reinhardt's painting process was a very individualistic one, a very unique one, and he never made a mystery of his technique like so many other New York School painters did. The first step in preparing this exquisite uh, matte uh, quality paint is actually involving uh, these jars here. But interestingly, his materials, despite the fact that his paintings look so uh, odd and unique, his materials are straight up classical, nothing more than oil paint out of the tube and turpentine, the typical solvent uh, for all oil painting. So what he would typically do is to use quite a bit of Mars black paint. To that entire quantity he would add just a little bit of one of the three colors he painted with red, green, and blue. Next a generous douse of turpentine and what I'm doing now is making sure that that oil paint is dissolving into that turpentine very very thoroughly. Reinhardt would then leave these jars on his shelves in his studio for a week, for two weeks, for perhaps a month. And the reason for that waiting period is that the dense part of the paint, in other words the pigment, would settle to the bottom. Meanwhile the light part of that mixture would rise to the top. Uh, what is the light part? Well it's the turpentine that he just added and now the oil, the binder, from that tube of paint now extracted from that pigment, lifted up to the top of this jar and what he would do next is this. He would open the jar and then pour off all of that solvent phase, if you will, or all that light part of the paint mixture, leaving behind only that sludge of paint. Because Reinhardt has withdrawn so much medium from his paint, the resulting paint surfaces are almost free of any trace of brushwork. In addition, they are the most matte paint surfaces you will probably ever see. Because there's no gloss, because there's no reflection on that surface, there is no other light hitting us in the eye. In other words, we have the opportunity to perceive color directly. Reinhardt was by far and away the most subtle colorist of the abstract expressionist painters. His use of color was so subtle, in fact, that it's on the very threshold of perception. To see these paintings, we quite literally have to slow down the pace of everyday life. These paintings demand our patience and close looking.